वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एम वी वाइपर यूजिंग आर एक्स स्विफ्ट विथ लिटिल बिट ऑफ एम वी वी एम एस वेल इन इट बट देन वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड दिस सीरीज अप टू प्लेस वेर एवरी थिंग अपटिल द प्रजेंटर और एवरी थिंग स्टार्टिंग फ्राम द प्रजेंटर लेट से टूअर्ड्स द इंटरक्टर एंड द सर्विस लेयर एंड द पार्सर दोज आर ऑल इन आर एक्स स्विफ्ट नाउ सो in this episode uh, we will try to um see how we can move everything which is there on the user interface side and the controller side and the presenter side towards the rx swift side so that end to end we can make sure that uh, everything works using the rx swift signaling so let's get started <clears throat> so whatever we have right now things like uh, update to the user interface Uh, or, or the view controller is happening through something called as a protocol, which is defined in the view controller called. Say, let's say we are targeting sign up in this episode. Mm, there are complicated cases like uh, login, which will happen in the future episodes where things are uh, a li- little more than normal, where we will also have to do some um, uh, database side as well. So sign up does not uh, actually take care or tackle all those things. So uh, this is more like a simpler use case which we are dealing with right now. So in sign up, if you see in view controller, it is implementing sign up view, which is which will make sure that uh, whatever updates which need to happen from the presenter is being hap- happens through uh, using this uh, sign up view uh, protocol, which is implemented by the view controller. So these things like update valid invalid state. update progress as well as update status these things are happening from the um, uh, presenter towards the view controller but like something like this view dot update progress or uh, view dot update status these things are happening uh, from here so we need to get rid of these things which are uh, using the protocol and we will use something uh, in a different way where we can use rx swift in, in instead of having these functions so for that let's start uh, first thing first let's start getting rid of these functions even um, let's define something where these we are not relying on these functions which are defined in the presenter let's say this is my presenter if i go to the presentation it is defining some functions like what should happen on login what should happen on validate and what should happen on sign up three things are happening so at least this validate of the control we can start uh, dealing with that uh, uh, right away because it, it it's happening in, in on uh, button click right now so if you go to the presenter validate function uses a protocol to get all the controls which which are actually implementing this field validatable protocol i'll show you that in a bit Field validatable are all the controls which we need to validate. Once that comes in, we checks for some rules like which is defined. Let's say if it is a uh, email control, then it needs to at least have a required validation in place as well as email validation. Only if those two things are valid, then it will let you uh, use the value of that control. If not, it's an invalid. It's in an invalid state. Similarly, for a password field, similar thing like if if password is at least password should be entered and it should also match like it should at least have 6 to 12 characters available for the password validation to uh, succeed so these validations we are passing as rules so field validatable is a protocol which we are implementing in a control called account text uh, control which is implementing field validatable and it it allows it to have the validation rules for this control as well as a validation text which is nothing but the input text and there will be a function to set the rules which can come from outside let like it can happen uh, let's say if i pass the rules from uh, through a configure function of this control then i can pass the validation rules from um, external source let's say in this case i'm configuring these controls when view did load is happening so i just configure with the name and the rules like required rule or required rule as well as email rule or required rule and password rule those are passed from uh, outside through the config function so 
which in turn will let me validate this control and then if it is valid I either it says this is a valid control I can use that value if not valid then I should not uh, let the uh, sign up process happen so one of the things first thing I'm gonna do right now is to con convert this control into an rx control first thing because I can then allow this control to validate itself as soon as I start enter some values to it. So for that, uh, let me implement something for this control. So whatever I'm trying to do right now is simple. I'm going to get rid of this call which is happening in the view controller where on let's say I sign up button tap. I'm validating each and every control which is there and seeing whether entry made are valid or not. So instead of relying on this button tap, I'm going to use the text value change of each of these controls and then validate it and then enable the sign up button based on the value which we are entering in that control. So for that, let's use Rx here. First thing first, I already have set error message, all that. So I'm going to do something here. This is my control. If you want to see how it looks like, it looks like something like this. So it has a title, it has an error message and it is where the text field value is entered. So this is the same thing, name, email or password. So it starts validating right now, only after I say tap on it, it says required and all. Then it says invalid email. Then it will say invalid, uh, must be between six and 12 characters. So what I'm gonna do right now is, as soon as I start entering something, it should validate and show me the error message. And also it should keep an, it should keep uh, the status of this control and enable this button based on that. It should not enable until I have, unless and I have entered the right values here. So that's the intention here. So let's go to this control. I'm going to extend this control into the Rx version. This is interesting. If you are um, excited about using Rx Swift in your controls. So I'm going to go, go extend, create an extension called, um, let me just see that. Okay. I'm going to extend, extend, uh, create an extension called reactive. This is coming as part of this where uh, I'll define what should be the base, which is actually this control account text control. Once I have done that, so once I have done that, um, <clears throat> um, I can create something for that value which you are gonna the text value which which we need as uh, something as an input for. Uh, making the sign up button or whatever is the value which needs to be passed to the let's say the service layer let's say the username email or password a valid va value for it let me just capture that so i'm gonna create something called as a driver string value which can be empty so driver is nothing but a ui value which will always be available in the main thread which will always replay at least one value and um, um, which will never error out so that's a driver element, which is more for the UI side. So this, this value is going to return a driver value. So let's see, you can just see what's going to happen here. First thing first, I'm going to capture something called as a control property of it, which is nothing but uh, self dot base base is nothing but my account text control. It has an input text field, which is nothing but this one. This, this is my input text field. This is my input text field. This is my error field and this is my title field. So this is, is this input text field is what I am accepting here and I'll do an Rx on it and get the text value of that input. So this is nothing but a control property. That's what it, it is in Rx terms. A regular property access through Rx is called as a control property. So now I'm gonna transform this control property which is the text property into something as a driver property 
or I can actually also accept empty values. Then I say make it as a driver. And then I'm going to map this value. This map value is nothing but the text value which we are entering. So I'll just say val text result not bothered because anyway it's going to return a string value. So I'm going to map this value. This control property is giving me a text value. Which, is, which will be nothing but whatever entry I'll be making to that input field. Now, because this um, this control is conforming to uh, a protocol called um, field validatable, I'll get these rules which are defined for this control as well as the validation text. But I'm more interested in the rules which are defined, which we are passing through the configure let's say if if i have i have this configure function so once the control is configured i am passing the rules which needs to be uh, validated for this specific control so there are different rules the base rule which is defined it's nothing but a protocol and there are derived rules like required rules and what should happen when what should happen like the error message for that for that rule also, what is the validation rule which needs to be applied here? Those are things which is happening within each and every rule which we have defined. So this is what we are injecting to each and every control through this configure function. So that's what I'm interested in here. So I'm mapping it and I know this text control is going to be weak um, text control is self dot base. I know this base control is because we have defined base as the text control. So I am mapping this text control and I can just get the validation rules related to the so I can get I can just say text control dot validation rules. These are all the rules associated with the specific instances of, of this control. Let's say if it is a password control, this will have a required validation as well as um, uh, a password validation, the strength validation. Those two are there. So I can always um, see through these rules. I can filter out. Let's say if this is my rule. And I can always say the rule dot I can validate against that rule with this text value which I am entering. So this is my rule for this control. So I'm just doing a filter means I'm trying to validate against each and every rule which is associated with this control and seeing whether that rule is valid or not. If it is true, then th there is no error. If not, if it is not valid, I can always return if not rule. So it, it will give me all the rules which failed here. So I can get the first value. So what it loops through each and everything and tries to see uh, what all rules failed and it returns you the first rule which failed here. That's what is happening here. Rule dot validate. just getting the first rule which failed so I can simplify this I can just get rid of all these and then simply say uh, dollar zero dot validate we are passing the text so this statement just gives me it's giving an error because uh, this whole thing is uh, this filter should only give me a boolean value this is actually a map and I'm just inside this this filter I'm just getting a first value but this filter uh, gives me a map but this return type is a string so this is actually giving me a rule so I need to actually get the string value right now so let me capture that rule here if rule if let i'm just seeing which is the rule which failed so it's the first rule which failed 
if there is a rule which has failed then i can always grab that rule and get its error message so i always get this error message so if this this it will only enter this first if there is some rule which is being broken right now if that is rule is broken i can get that corresponding error message which is nothing but what we define in the uh, let's say derived rule email rule so what is the error message i am passing this error message through the init like invalid email or something so that's what is being set here so i can also have custom rules or i can also pass some rules from externally so that is the error message i need to show in the text controls uh, error labels text value if there is an error this is going to pop up like it is going to be this is going to be shown at that point like this error and then in that case i can return nil because it did not satisfy some rule so i cannot return some valid value of this control property this value is not valid because this rule did not satisfy so i'm just returning nil value else we can always say return the right value if 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 there is no return first there is there was no value rule which was returned here that means every rule passed then i can always return the text directly because every rule passed so I, this text is valid now so also i need to do one thing here i need to show no error message i'm just replacing this so if it if there is a rule which is being violated then i set the return value as nil and then set that error message if not i set the reset the error message and then return directly the text message and then i can just say map it's even not required but then I'm just saying <clears throat> if this value is fine then I can always return that value dollar zero so that's what the rx part of this is whenever I start entering some text into this it starts validating dynamically and returns this rule if there is a rule which is being violated and I return nil value for this property so that's what this value will get nil nil value so it's very easy to then validate my control against empty values if it is empty i will not let the uh, sign up process come continue so that's what this control property reactive thing which i did i think this is pretty clear now